God is calling every Christian to a place of intimacy. Do you know that every Christian is called to a place of intimacy with God? There is always a burning desire, a deep hunger and passion in every faithful believer to have a deeper connection with God. As a Christian, you should always have a sincere yearning for a healthy relationship with God, which is the key that unlocks intimacy and a tight-knit closeness with the Almighty. What is intimacy? What does it mean to be intimate with God? Why does only a few reach this hallowed place of intimacy? In this video, you will learn about intimacy and its relevance in the life of a Christian. The eyes of your understanding will be made open by the Spirit of God to the intricacies of intimacy if you pay attention to the end with an open heart. Before we proceed, kindly make this heartfelt prayer request. You can also write it in the comment section below. Almighty Lord, place in me a burning desire to reach a deeper place of intimacy with you. Amen. Chapter 1. A Place More Fulfilling Every Christian is a gem in the sight of God, and it's all joy in heaven whenever an unbeliever accepts Christ and joins the precious fold. This is so because the very desire of the Father is for all mankind to be saved and united in His glorious kingdom. However, gaining salvation is not where it stops for God's children. There's always more from God's immeasurable treasure trove for every believer to enjoy. This includes love, joy, peace, prosperity, health, guidance, miracles, signs, wonders, ministration of angels, and many more. As a child of God, you have access to these spiritual goodies, but at the same time, you must keep in mind that there's still something that's deeper, more rewarding, and highly fulfilling, which God wants you and every other Christian to discover and constantly benefit from. God earnestly wills for all Christians to enter into a place of intimacy with Him. Jeremiah 31 3 says, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God always seeks to bring His children close to Him. He is a friend who provides a safe place for all who loyally run into His embrace. This is a place where intimacy builds and develops. However, the truth is that only a few reach the place of intimacy and stay faithful in it. Most people are ignorant, while some forget that nothing on earth is spiritually valuable than intimacy. Do not be among the ignorant. Do not trudge along with the forgetful crowd. God wants you to abide in the place of intimacy so that you can be well equipped and empowered to overcome life's challenges. Every Christian is on the devil's radar as his plan is to always try to kill, destroy, and snuff out the life out of every person that belongs to God's kingdom. It is very important to know this. Intimacy with God makes the agenda of the devil toothless and useless. The devil is intelligent enough to know this, and that is why he continuously devises different means to distract Christians from the place of intimacy with God. Chapter 2 why only a few reach that place. God is love, God is merciful. He calls out to his children at different moments to give a reminder of how important it is to abide in the place of intimacy. He showers his attention without discrimination and seeks for all to enjoy the many benefits that come from a sound relationship with him. It is quite sad, however, that only a few reach the place of intimacy. Only a few pay the price attached to getting close to God. Only a few believers distinguish themselves enough to have a deeper relationship with God. There are many people who do not appreciate the reality of intimacy with God. We are in the end time and it is evident how people care about material things that can perish. The minds of many have been negatively influenced by the God of this world. And people's attention to carnal activities have led to less care about spiritual growth or intimacy with God. This downward spiral can be attributed to a love for self and worldly things. 2 Timothy 3, 2 says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. A lot of people have become selfish in a bid to match the tempo of this world. The world is quick advancing and no one wants to be left behind. 
This has led to the abandonment of that inner voice that gives a reminder of the place of intimacy with God. Many fail to learn that the wisdom and strength to achieve lasting success comes from consistent communion with God. It's a pity that this is the case. B. Sin and unrighteousness. This is another reason why people do not reach the place of intimacy with God. Allowing your life to be filled with sin and filth does not create a good environment for intimacy with God. Intimacy comes from a solid relationship with God. While there are factors that sustain a relationship, there are also factors that are toxic to a relationship. Sin and unrighteousness does bring toxicity into a person's relationship with God, and this toxicity hinders intimacy. C. Lack of commitment. When a person does not give adequate commitment to the things of God, there would be no room for spiritual growth. No form of intimacy with God can result from a lack of commitment. Many people are either uncommitted or inconsistent. They do not put their relationship with God first before anything. They become distracted and busy with other things, and before they know it, they fall short of intimacy with God. D. Spiritual complacency and lukewarmness. Some Christians feel content with a surface-level faith. They lack the motivation to deepen their spiritual journey. They allow themselves to become lukewarm when they are meant to always keep their heart burning hotly for God. When complacency sets in, a deeper and more profound relationship with God cannot be sustained. This is not the state God wants His beloved to abide in. Other reasons why people lack intimacy include lack of discipleship, Neglect of the place of prayer and word study, fear, disobedience, and spiritual blindness caused by principalities and powers in high places. Every believer must fight the good fight of faith and stand firm in Christ to avoid the loss of intimacy with God because the full essence of being a believer cannot be realized outside of a strong intimacy with God. Chapter 3. How You Can Reach the Place of Intimacy Steps to Take A. Devotion this has to do with the act or state of giving oneself time, focus, efforts, and commitment entirely to a particular matter or thing. In this context, devotion ought to be given to God by a person who seeks to experience intimacy with Him. A solid devotion is proof that a person is interested in a sound relationship with God. It is a sheer demonstration of love and total surrender to God's will. Mark 12.30 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. To get to a place of intimacy with God, you must demonstrate your love and devotion to His person. You must also pay total allegiance to His kingdom, plan, and purpose. How do you demonstrate your love? How do you devote your time and attention to God? The answer is to stay sincerely committed and true to Him by placing Him first and foremost before any other thing. God must be your top priority. This is how to get to the place of intimacy. B. Consistent Word Study God's Word as contained in the Holy Bible is the primary way through which God reveals Himself to mankind. Deep study of the Scriptures allows believers to understand God's character, His promises, and His will. Psalms 119, 11 to 12 says, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. The word of God provides instructions and keeps us in check. It is potent and it is life-giving. Those who meditate upon God's word day and night and apply it obediently will always grow in grace, wisdom, and truth. David said in Psalms 119, 97, Oh, how love I thy law! It is my meditation all the day. This is how intimacy with God is built and sustained. Engage in daily Bible reading and study. Use devotionals, commentaries from veritable sources, and study manuals to deepen your understanding. Consider joining a Bible study group to explore and discuss the scriptures with others. When you do all of this, you will understand the heart of God and be a man after it just like David. C. Fasting and consistent prayer. This is an important step to take to reach the place of intimacy with God. God is spirit. Fasting and prayer are also highly spiritual activities. 
Prayer opens up a channel of communication with God. It's through prayer that believers can express their thoughts, emotions, desires, and requests while also listening for God's guidance and wisdom as God speaks back when a person is connected to Him in prayer. Prayer also generates power against spiritual forces that wage war against the overall progress of the believer. It is also a process of affirming and reaffirming spiritual realities in Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 instructs all believers to pray without ceasing. The importance of prayer cannot be overemphasized, so set aside specific times every day for prayer. If you have no experience, start with a few minutes and gradually increase your prayer duration. Incorporate different forms of prayer and maximize praying in tongues by the help of the Holy Spirit. Fasting, on the other hand, opens the door to a range of spiritual benefits. It is a spiritual activity that involves abstaining from food or other activities to focus more intently on God. It heightens spiritual awareness, catalyzes regeneration, and increases dependence on God. Fasting and prayer both go together for maximum result, and carrying out these activities in the right manner increases intimacy with God. Other important steps to take to reach the place of intimacy with God includes offering deep worship and praise to God, which can be done through curating harmonious sounds and words of gratitude, giving oneself away to the service of the kingdom and ministry of the gospel, which entails discipleship, mentorship, contributing significantly to the body of Christ by learning, teaching, and giving sacrificially to help those in need. Engaging in all these activities pleases God and proves your understanding and love for His person. God is never deceived, and He sees the heart of those who have fear and reverence for Him. When you belong to such category of people who sincerely reverence God, you'll surely experience and sustain intimacy with Him. Say this prayer in faith, Almighty Lord, lead me to intimacy as I take these steps of faith. Help me to be responsible and true to your will. Chapter 4 What Happens When You Reach the Place of Intimacy Sarah grew up hearing stories of faith and divine encounters, but they always seemed like distant tales which were beyond her possible reach. Her days were filled with routine and the mundane chores of country life. Every day unfolded almost in the same manner, and there wasn't really anything remarkably new that occurred. However, one day, while she was exploring the chapel's library, her attention caught an old, dust-covered journal which belonged to a priest who had lived centuries before. The journal had a comprehensive detail of his personal journey of intimacy with God. She suddenly swelled with curiosity in that moment and had a deep yearning for a great encounter with God. Sarah got an impression upon her heart to attempt the practices of devotion, word study, prayer, and fasting which she found in the journal. She spent her early mornings in silent prayer, listening for the still small voice of God. She diligently studied the scriptures and found it to be filled with God's wisdom. The Holy Spirit indwelt her and began to reveal to her the hope of Christ's calling, and she found meaning and immense comfort at all times. Her faith was growing, her understanding deepened. As she sang hymns in the chapel's quiet sanctuary, she felt her heart lifting in worship, connecting with a divine presence she had never known before. She could not wait to share what she felt with others. Sarah's relationship with God grew through these daily encounters. She learned to see His hand in every stroke of creation. Despite coming from little beginnings, she saw her life blossom like a tree planted by the riverside which brings forth fruits in its season. By revelation, she knew the mind of God and had a good grasp of His plan and purposes, courtesy of the Holy Spirit who never ceased to guide and direct her. Sarah's life transformed significantly. She became a sign and a wonder. This is an example of what happens when you reach the place of intimacy. In fact, the truth is, there can be much more. Chapter 5. With great grace and power comes great responsibility. 
you have seen the importance of intimacy and how you can sustain an intimate relationship with God. However, do not think that it only stops at that. You are designed by God for a divine purpose, and as long as you stay committed every day of your life, you will be continuously groomed and refined as God's threshing instrument, as God's battle axe. What war do you think God is interested in winning? Now Jesus conquered sin and the wages of sin for the redemption of all mankind. This does not automatically save all, as it is only those who believe and accept Christ as Lord and Savior that get to receive salvation and total redemption from the captivity of hell, death, and darkness. This brings us back to the war we mentioned earlier, for which you're a formidable instrument, a soldier that heeds the clarion call of the Supreme Commander who sits on the throne in heaven, far above all principalities and powers in the spirit and earthly realm. When you grow in intimacy, you begin to discern the heart of God, and this spurs you to action. You are expected to carry out His will, which has to do with the reconciliation of men and women to the kingdom of God. This becomes your foremost responsibility. Because of your intimacy with God, you now bear the ministry of the kingdom which involves preaching the gospel, making disciples of all people, healing the sick, intercession, performing miracles as well as signs and wonders. Intimacy sets you on the same wavelength with the Spirit of God, thus making you a life-giving being. Hence, it becomes your primary assignment to touch lives positively, just like Jesus did, and just like He instructed His disciples to do. Matthew 28, 18, 20 says, And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. It is now expected of you to fight the good fight of faith, and finish strong. Always bear in mind that you will give account of this before God. Say this prayer. You can also write it in the comment section for more emphasis. Lord, I commit the ministry you have given me into your hands. Help me to be diligent with the reconciliation of the unsaved to your all-powerful kingdom. Amen.